it's time it's time for the live <laughs> hi Courtney hi Faith how are you I'm so excited to be here have you are this month has been so fun I know I know people are just trickling in welcome friends um I'm so excited about this month so Courtney and I are going to we're just going to like make small talk for a couple minutes before we get into the meat of it as people trickle in we're so excited to see you. it's Sherry hi and Ann and Jimmy and Deb, so many friends. Um, please, as an introductory question, let us know the name of the book you're working in. I'm going to type it in the chat. Um, you will find the chat box if you go to the bottom of your screen, click on chat, and it will pop up on the right hand side. So I'm saying, What is the book? Faith, I love this prompt to start us off while we're waiting because it's poetry month and titles of books in a row make an accidental poem <laughs> okay well already yes mathematics for self-study a war of gifts murder on the hour voices from the sky Ziegfeld curtain wilderness clearing Jonathan Livingston Siegel the triumphant cat the science of secrecy Phil that's brilliant was that hard to cut up? Tracking trash in the ocean of the night. These are all so good. Thank you for sharing these. I I um, couldn't find my book for a minute, so I tracked down an old book. And it was like driving somebody else's car, like driving an old car, because I had to get used to, like the pages are different. The text is different. Um, oh, the punch ball. I love that there's a Nancy Drew and a uh, Bobsy twins. Yeah. <laughs> Covering a lot of territory. Your sorrows, but just copying from it, not to cut up. I like that. Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. That's good. A piano book. Um, thank you all for joining us today. We're so excited to have you here. I am Faith. Hi, I'm Courtney. <laughs> and we have a daily practice right now on Creative Bug. It's Altered Books Daily Practice, the sequel, because when when did we come out with the original one? Was it three years ago? Oh, more than that, because our kids are three. It was four or five years ago. Yeah. And Courtney has taught over 100 classes on the site, correct? Including an altered book class that never got released. So our class was like the first altered book class on the site that was like an official or DP. Know this. It's old creative bug lore, you know, first year. <laughs> um, and well, I have made over fifth, over 12 classes on the site, so not as many as Courtney, but I'm slowly working my way towards her. Oh, Julie thinks it was 2018. Sorry. That sounds about right, 2018. Um, and we had such a good time um, making that class, and we had such a good time making this one. This one, we were not in the studio filming together at the same time. The and, that one that's happening this month. We were yes. we were in the same studio. Faith came out to California. She used to be based here, but then went back home to New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, so she comes out and films with us in our studio in Berkeley on occasion. And so we were in the office at the same time, but not on set at the same time. So we tag teamed out. <laughs> well, and point being is that I have been surprised by your prompts. So I've gotten to do them. I had like a phone situation so I was not able to document or put them on Instagram but um please everybody if you are um posting your images on Instagram tag Courtney and I or creative bug hashtag creative bug um anything that is hashtag creative bug I take a look at and I'll also post them into the class gallery because I've been super impressed with the stuff that I've seen there um the transparency like everyone the pigeon prompt the day that I did the pigeon I forget which day it is in the daily practice I loved how everyone has done like a different bird so I've seen owls oh I did see an amazing fox owls was it two two pigeons this morning I saw um those are so 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 fun I love them thank you for sharing them I lost my lobster he's somewhere yeah where's your lobster I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere in, you know, buried under the massive stack of the stuff, um, which I guess we can go into now, the stuff of it. So I hope you have brought with you, clearly everybody brought their books to create out of. And 
a resource that I wanted to talk more about when we filmed the class and I totally didn't have time for it is the Library of Congress Online Archives. Um, do you usually work from this when you're like looking for images that aren't copyrighted? One of them um, for non-copyrighted images. I, my first one is NYPL, so New York Public Library's digital archive. You can choose things that have no copyright. Um, and then there are other like, I've been using Pexels. It's like Pixels mm -hmm. with an E for portrait reference for classes. Um, there's Creative Commons and then Library of Congress for sure is in the in the top five. And Courtney, have I told you 1700 times my personal connection to the Library of Congress? It's like my my greatest pat on the back. It's like I do it for maybe four minutes every four months. And I am an official transcriptionist for the Library of Congress. It's a volunteer program. And it's really easy and really fascinating because you get first look at these documents that have been brought up from the archives that need to be digitized and they use volunteers so yeah. I don't do the photo side of it but every once in a while I'll get an email that's like we could use your help for this final push of you know revolutionary war letters home can you read this person's handwriting and I try and then get regular updates on like how the campaign is doing and, and what historian researched those archives to use it. Um I did not know that Faith. So how has this not come up in water cooler conversation, huh? I haven't told you this. No, but I love that because it makes me think about the sad fact that people are not learning calligraphy, like kids are not learning calligraphy. So those volunteers are gonna like age out. Well th this will set your mind at ease. Most of the volunteers they said are like retired academics or high schoolers who need volunteer hours for credit. Oh, that makes sense. Because they can do it from their house. So I love the idea that these like, you know, like, oh, might as well. I mean, that's a big assumption about their attitudes are like copying letters between Walt Whitman and Oscar Wilde. I actually got an in and I was like, can you tell me? Because they interviewed, they were just interviewing random, you know, transcriptionists and they were like, oh, do you have any final words? I was like, yeah, what's coming up? What's cool? She said, well, on Tuesday. So I knew when it was going. So I got to, like, can you believe, like, who who am I that I'm transcribing? Sorry, I'm. this is a side note. We knew this was going to happen. Deb was asking, how do you volunteer? I think you probably look on the Library of Congress's website. Yeah, Library of Con L O C dot gov, I'm guessing. Um, so Courtney and I each decided to pull three images from the Library of Congress visual database. And Courtney has a specific technique she's going to teach us. And then we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it. Um, we'll spend about a half an hour working on our projects. Um, hopefully you have up on your screen, our faces and our hands. Um, and also feel free to write questions in the chat. We'll be saving a, a bit of the questions for a question and answer session later but we will be keeping our eyes on the chat. Again, you can access the chat by going to the bottom of your screen and clicking chat. It will pop up on the right-hand side. Um, and there's and some good image sources in there already for people who posted their favorites. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Deb posted the how to volunteer. It's super worthwhile and really interesting. And like, I get a big self-esteem boost from it. It makes me feel very important in like a brain way, not in a like, I need more graham crackers. Who am I kidding? She doesn't want graham crackers. She wants cookies. Mom way. Um, so, Courtney, show us the image we're working with for the pochoir. Yeah. So, okay, I've got two books from the daily practice. This is the one I had worked in for the daily practice. I'm actually going to use Faith's book because I wanted a background that was a little bit, um, had like text that could sort of fade away because my book was mostly imagery and almost no text. So I'll just find a little spread in here. So I'm gonna set my book aside, I'm using Faith's book. And then I went through Library of Congress and just picked a few images that I liked. So something that makes a nice strong silhouette is something that we're looking for, but we're actually gonna be using the negative space for our pochoir technique and pochoir just means stencil in French. I'll put it in the chat. That's how you spell it, pochoir. Um, so I have this like great 
Civil War era dude with this insane mustache. Um, this is not going to work, but I just love this image. I'm going to make it a little bit closer so you can see it. It's like laundry hanging in New York. My guess is going I think to I'm going to make it work. Not it's for this Italian technique. neighborhood is going to be my guess. I'm Italian and I feel like this is like quintessential like Italian look. Um, and then I love this little tennis player. I was, um, she looks sort of like Mary Poppins to me because she's floating and my toddler is obsessed with Mary Poppins. And so I was going to use her. So you need some kind of image that you can easily cut out a recognizable shape. We're not going to use the shape itself. We're going to use the space that's left over. So the negative space as our stencil. And if you are trying to gather your materials, you'll want to have your image. You want to have a cutting mat, an exacto knife. Uh, you don't want to use scissors because again, it's the negative space as one complete shape that we're going to use. And then for my technique, I'm just going to use just standard like rubber stamp ink pad um, in a couple of colors, pick three colors, two colors, whatever you have. And then you need something like a stencil brush. So this is a pretty stiff bristled brush with as flat an edge as you can get. Here's one makeup brush could probably work. We're gonna be making a motion like this, like you would with stenciling. So I've got those things ready. Um, and the first thing you're gonna do is cut out your image. So let's see if I can get this to go closer. Okay. All right, so just using my X-Acto knife, I'm not being super precise. If you were to, I mean, kind of precise, but like not that precise, I'm cutting off her nose, that's fine. Just want it to be recognizably human shaped. A dog silhouette would work nicely or an animal silhouette of some kind. And if you had the foresight to print this on like a cardstock, it would make it probably a little easier for the stenciling part. You can rotate your paper. Ooh, should have brought some tape with me because that's a little boo-boo right there. That's okay. The ridiculous thing about working in an office filled with craft supplies is that somehow when you need an X-Acto knife, you cannot locate one. And so this is the only <laughs> like cutting blade I could find. And um, it's kind of dull, so it's not doing the most precise job. Courtney, usually you can't find the thing because I've stolen it. But ah, for this awful. time, you can't. I just wanted to announce um, for the people, there should be four videos showing up on your screen. Courtney's face, my face, Courtney's hands, my hands. Um, if this isn't happening for you, click on the three little dots, uh, the view button, and check speaker view. That will get you um, the four views we are most interested in seeing. Also, if you want to pin Courtney's hands, she's done a really nice zoom in on the cutting process and you can pin that to your screen. Thank Thanks you. Rachel for your tech assistance. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you everyone for tech assistance. It's like not what I'm doing while cutting. Okay. so. In this case, I'll just follow this along. I'll show you another version of this where I made a modification to my photo when I was cutting it. Okay, so let's see. I'm not as concerned with the actual shape. I'm looking for the stencil, the negative shape. Ooh, I'm getting something back. So this little lady, oh, her foot got caught. That's okay. You could tape that back on or glue that. You can save her for another prompt. This is the piece that I want, which is the negative space. Doesn't she already look like Mary Poppins, but with like a tennis racket instead of a broom? I mean, that kind of looks like a broom too, except if you're holding it in the wrong way. And we're going to use this to do our pochoir technique. So working on, in my book, rather, Facebook, <laughs> I'm going to just find a place. And for this, I don't, I'm not like lining it up to anything that's already in the book. I'm just plopping it down to start. Looks like Faith is also doing this. And she picked a different image, the guy with the mustache, and she's using a transparency page. And you're using scissors, but that's okay because your person goes right to the edge. As I figured I would talk through my specifics while you were brushing on 
okay. your ink because that part takes a minute. So my next step is to grab my first color of ink. This one happens to be Hero Arts Neon Pink Dye Ink. You can use dye or pigment-based ink. Uh, this is just one because, you know, Neon Pink is my favorite, one of my favorites. And then using, again, a very flat brush, a stencil brush would be ideal. I'm gonna raise this up because I am pretty sure I'm gonna hit this when I go to start pouncing. So, Sort of it's like a weird makeup-y kind of feel because <laughs> you're <laughs> pounce, 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 pounce. You want to get good color. If you only have one brush, I would recommend starting with your lightest of your three ink colors and starting with that just so that you don't get too much color change or muddiness on the brush itself. I also have some baby wipes to wipe away the color. You could tape this in place. I'm not going to do anything that fussy, but I do want to just add color in a very up and down motion pouncing this in place. If you do something side by side, you'll wind up picking up your stencil and you won't get a nice, clean, crisp image. So this is the pochoir technique. And I'm re-inking as I go. Get a nice audio component. <laughs> and I have to say, I was telling Faith, so when Faith was started at Creative Bug, um, we hired her to like edit knit and crochet patterns because she's a knitwear designer had worked for Vogue Knitting for many years amongst other knitting accolades that I can't remember all right now. But then the sneaker talent was that she has a master's in bookmaking, <laughs> which I was like, wait, what? Um, Cause before I worked for Creative Bug, I was teaching a lot of workshops at the San Francisco center for the book. So we connected on our bookmaking love. It's also how Ebon came to be part of Creative Bug as well, because Faith and E went to grad school together. Um, and pochoir, I feel like, is a technique that at the master level of bookmaking, you would definitely be including in some of your art. We definitely have artists in our Bay Area bookmaking community, um, like Macy Chadwick, who uses pochoir. And I always thought it was way too fussy. I was like, no, no one wants to deal with that. But it's actually like a really beautiful sort of French deco technique. People use it for wallpaper for um, limited editions of prints and bookmaking artist books. Uh, is it Sophie Delaney, Sophia Delaney, Sonia Delaney, Sonia Delaney. Sorry, my brain after having a baby cannot remember names like I used to. Um, also of that period, like the 1930s, beautiful artist books using pochoir. So now I'm like excited about the technique again. And I don't think it's super fussy. Okay, so pounce, pounce, pounce. And then you get this really cool sort of soft application of color, but with a really defined edge, which is what you're going for. Um, and then I'm gonna try just moving this around and changing my color just to see what happens. You're adding a translucent layer using the ink in this methodology, like, or in this method rather, as opposed to like paint, which would be much more opaque. So it's gonna, going to allow us to get some translucent color overlap. And use a baby wipe. Um, so someone's asking, will this video be saved? Yes, everyone who signed up, whether or not they're here watching at the moment, will get a link after the live is done. This is true for all of our Zoom lives and uh, you'll be able to rewatch it. And I believe we'll also be putting this on the site. So you'll be able to just watch it on Creative Bug as well. Okay, so not super wet, but just kind of wipe down. If you were to rinse this, then you wouldn't be able to use it for your next um, stamping because it would be too wet. Linda try. asks, since we're using the negative space, it doesn't open, matter whether or not it's black and white or color. No, no, good question. I just, these happen, a lot of um, old images are black and white just because of the technology of color photography process and so forth. Um, so they just happen to be black and white. There's no reason for that. And you could be using magazine pages, um, and if you wanted to keep the stencil, I would recommend copying it onto cardstock so it would last a little bit longer. Okay. This is a Yellow Owl Workshop ink pad, which happens to be one of my favorite brands. You can see I'm, I didn't do a great job cleaning. I'm getting like a little bit of pink onto the green here, but whoop, this ink pad also may not be too juicy enough for us. Okay, we're gonna switch colors. I'm gonna try this one instead, this aqua. 
like a deep teal. Okay, while you're doing that, do you mind if I explain what I've been working on? Do it. So this is not post raw because it is not using a brush and a stamp pad. This is just making a stencil. And the only reason why I have this acrylic paper, not acrylic paper, this transparency is from Courtney's day where she traced the pigeon. So I laid the transparency over the image and I traced over it with a paint pen and then I just cut it out. The black and whiteness of it all is irrelevant. Um, and I'm using a crayon. Now, one thing that is kind of helpful with the transparency is um, I think it's more annoying to cut. I wouldn't have cut it if it was an image in the middle of the page because you definitely need um, an X-Acto blade. It's not going to work as well. As Courtney said, don't bother doing it with scissors. But since I'm going off the edge, the scissors work just fine. And then you can also see where you are placing it on the page. I find that helpful to see the overlap. And I'm just using a crayon. I'm just seeing what happens. Um, my three-year-old will often say, well, you know, what do we do if this? And I'll say, we'll see what happens. And every once in a while, she'll say like, I want ice cream. And I'll say, we can't have ice cream. She said, let's, let's see what happens. And then it comes back to, to get me. Okay, so here are my two images overlapped. You can see a little bit of the third or tertiary color kind of coming up in the overlap. Did I bring my one up here from, that I had made before? Here's one where I use the same stencil, but when I cut her out, I gave her some hair, like witchy hair. And I did the teal that you just saw, a fuchsia color. And then I actually flipped the stencil over so like that and stenciled from the back so I could get this person in a 180 flip here. So this is just on paper that I could tip into my book um, just when I was testing. But I wanted to try this also with another image. Let's see. Working on a very tiny table, y'all. <laughs> so here, here is the negative space of this guy, the mustachioed man. Um, that Faith is working with. She's working with a little bit smaller. That could work. But I also, there was a Faith uh, image that Faith found of a crowd and I cut them out and I thought they might be interesting, um, probably on a different page. Let's see. I'm totally delighted with what's happening here because we're getting this <gasps> like. Oh yeah, you got like your optical. That's nice. And now I have to, I have to give them a poem, right? Or a title. Something, something has to happen. I'm just flipping through my book here to figure out what page I want to do this on. This is the book I worked on during class, which is the drawing made easy. This image. This image. Um, we'll be opening it up for questions in about five minutes. In the meantime, I have, Two questions for you, Courtney. Oh yeah. Um, well, one is like a, it's like one of those small talk questions. Where it's like, actually, I just want to tell my version, which is how do you keep your supplies organized? And I've been using these a lot, these little plastic bins. Like first grade, come back. All the glue yes. sticks, <laughs> yes. all the little scissors. And like anything I cut out will end up in the basket. And then I have one per project. The problem is, Micah steals them. So yeah. So yeah, she also yeah. has one per project. Um, but how do you keep your supplies organized? Because for as many supplies as you have, shockingly organized. Um, yes, that is like everyone's feedback every time they see my space, which is I just love drawers, is the thing. I just love furniture that have drawers in them. Um, I'm like a fixtures person. I'm the person that walks into the antique shop and I want to immediately purchase the thing that's not for sale through display only. You do have a lot of drawers, but how do you know what's inside? And everything's labeled. So I am organized. My problem is really like, is it at my house? Is it at my studio? Is it at Creative Bug? And when I had a shop, it was like, or is it at the shop? So it's like, how many glue sticks do I have? Because they have to be in every single location so that when I want one, they're there. Um, so yeah, I have dr labeled drawers. I do like your bin situation though. And I feel like, especially if they were just stacked, I like that. Do uh, people have other favorite ways of 
organizing. Um, feel free to use the chat to let us know. Oh yeah, this was not just a Courtney question. This was like a, a humanity, like help, please. Tell us. Actually, um, I don't know if anybody else is like listening to this, like um, thinking the same way I'm thinking, but oh, I like pig words. Pig words are very Julie Child. I love that. OMG, the core, the like whatever core as a trend is a little bit like not something I can fully comprehend, like cottage core, <laughs> 90s core, what have you. But apparently there's something that's like, oh, I forget the term they used. It's like organization core and it's old school looking drawers, but with like a modern art organization spin. I don't know. And I was like, oh, that's hundred percent me. That's me. Whatever that core version is. That's what I <laughs> Org core. That's you. Org core. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, I gosh, how much Alex shelving? That sounds good. What? Could, oh, drawers and shelves in the closet. Ikea boxes and buckets. Oh, Look that's too part. risky for me. Because yeah, I would. Well, what do you do with those buckets? What's in those buckets? Because a apothecary core. That is you. That's it. That's me. Oh my God. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. You're probably 10 years younger than me. That helps. I can't even get them right, the names. Apothecary core, 100%. That's what I identify as. Um, I found my text. All apply, all coincide, and concur. I would say this math book was, I thought that maybe I was no longer good at, not that I've ever been good at um, erasure poetry, but I was like, oh, guess that's something. Like, I can't go on swings anymore. I've lost my equilibrium with the baby. I thought that I lost my um, erasure poetry with the baby, but I didn't. I just used a math book and it was a lot less lovely and poetic. Yeah. Um, so when I, yeah, this book, erasure poetry is not a problem. <laughs> Points in time. Because it's lovely and beautiful. We waited in our darkened rooms. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need right. for the whole poem. That's good source material to make your blackout poetry for sure. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a different color. Back to my neon. So the basis of the black and white photo was more to see um, what each of us would do with the prompt. I loved um, Courtney's push prompt, but I didn't have the attention span. Um, and also my ink pad dried out. Uh, so <laughs> that's why I'm doing the stencils. Um, and because you're using your, your group guy shot, I'm gonna get my guy group and see oh, what- Oh yeah, I wanna see what you did. Sorry if like this incessant tapping is annoying. I didn't think about that. I don't, I don't, it's not, it's not. Julie says, my organization skills are not great. And I try different things to see what works. If you like stuff put away, use white storage boxes with lids from Ikea. For stuff I'd like to see, I use vintage bowls. That's lovely. Yeah. The things like paper I've ripped up for collage. And yeah, then- I wanna hear about this in the chat, y'all. I am a pile person. So, especially because I am obsessed with books and I have too many books. My partner's always telling me like enrolling his eyes when a new book shows up. <laughs> else which is like three times a week um they're used they're from thrift books or whatever and they take up such little space so I am like a pile person you know and I'm like books papers piles and each one is sort of a project and for me it's like if it's out then I feel like that is my visual to-do list but if I put it away I won't get to it and this is how you wind up with many many piles and never a clean surface to put things on Anybody else file person? Lauren says she can't hear us. It, are other people? E! Yes. <laughs> Files and books. Yes. Oh, and yeah, Wendy too. Piles and baskets. I also love baskets. I feel like that is me turning into my mother though. Baskets are now creeping up. Kobe, who works with us, was laughing because I used to do all the sets for Creative Bug for the last 10 years and now Kobe is doing sets. And she's like, we're going to use all those baskets we, we have for this next set. I was like, I can't help it. I love the baskets. They have so much potential. Um, I was at my 
Um, my sister ran a workshop for forging magnolia blossoms. Do you know, oh shoot? Well, I want to talk about my magnolia blossoms, but also look at those guys. Yeah, this looks nice, right? Nice crisp edge, but soft, fuzzy color. That's the magic of the pochoir. Stunning. Is this the kind of thing you you did? You're like, oh, this is why people like it. Yeah, this is why people like it. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. Mm -hmm. um, magnolias. And the person who forged the magnolia blossoms was using a forging basket, which I had previously only seen on your sets. Oh. So those ones that you can turn inside out, full of, full of blossoms. They taste like ginger. Magnolia blossoms? Yes. So we pickled them and they're amazing. Wow, that sounds good. There's a magnolia tree across from my house. So you pick, you have to pick them before they blossom oh, in the, under the cover of night if it's not your house. Right. And then peel off the outer leaves. Um, and then just do like a like a half vinegar, half sugar situation. Uh, unbelievably good. Oh. I'll have to talk you through it. Offline. Offline. <laughs> um, I love that, Faith. That's so good. Okay, I'm going to do the stencil again. I've turned it over so people look a little bit different and I'm just going to stagger it and try to work in a darker color. If I had thought I was going to do this to begin with, I would have started with my first one as a lighter color, but I didn't think about it. I just went for it. Bill so says foraging is called, wait, scrumping in the UK. Foraging or pochoir? I'm, I'm guessing you foraging. Scrumping. Hmm. It has those vibes. You're like scrubbing in someone else's bushes. Seriously, this is getting a little bit dry. I was going to tell you too, like, why not just put this this way and pound away? Um, and it's just, you do not get such soft, lovely, even color. You could do it if you're just trying to do it quickly. Um, but it's not going to give you the full pochoir technique. Just saying. You got to do a lot of tapping. If you look closely as Courtney and I page through these books, you'll get a sneak peek into what's to come with the rest of the month because we're only yeah, barely we're only two days in. in. I can't wait to see. I know I see a lot of heads down, which means I hope people are working on their books now. I can't wait for the part of this hour where you get to show us all the fun things you're doing. Also, let's see, Shay, who's the first one on my screen here, your background looks really fun and organized and colorful. Uh, you haven't seen the half of it. Shay and I hung out and I got a tour. <gasps> Sorry, Shay, am I blowing up your spot? <laughs> also, Shay, I'm asking you to unmute so that we're not just oh. talking about you. Yeah, no, you can talk about me. Talk away. It's all good. Uh, no secrets. <laughs> um, please share your Instagram handle because I've been really loving what you've been posting. Unless you're private. I don't know. No, I'm not. It's just Scrappy Shay. S-H-A-E. Um, the bird you posted today was unbelievable. Oh, thanks. I gasped. Uh, I love it. Um, Courtney, that's all my thread for my serger. So that's all thread up there. It's amazing. What do you make with your serger? Do you do garments or what's your specialty? Um, I think like pouches and bags and like fabric organizers, like really mm -hmm. intricate, crazy things with pouches and zippers. And yeah, like there's, I think love. there's some on my account. Okay. I will check that out. That's amazing art case, like art supply storage cases and stuff. I love it. I love that kind of stuff. I love holders for things. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me, Shay. That's amazing. Um, oh, so, well, this might be a good time to say, if you were posting- Look, look at my crowd. Instagram, it's so Sorry. cool. Sorry, I, <laughs> I can't get enough of this. I like this image you picked, Faith. Thank, well, I like- if I see an image of people looking at something and you see their backs, it's like an instant grab for me because then you can do something really neat in front of them. The problem is these guys are looking down at a horse, apparently <laughs> a horse autopsy. It's an early like veterinarian school situation. Um, so I, I have to find an image that can fit back here pretty tightly. But um, if 
you are on Instagram and you're sharing your work, please tag us a creative bug, but also feel free to drop your handle in the chat so that we can follow along. Luba is asking, is there a book project going on? Where can I find out about it? The book project is the current creative bug daily practice. So there's a new segment of the class dropping every single day in this month, creativebug.com. They posted it in uh, the chat. Um, you have to be a creative bug mummer to access it. We also have a, it sounds like you're doing an altered book project with your junior high students. Amazing. That, this is the perfect age to do it too, yeah. because they're not starting with a blank page. So that anxiety is like cut down substantially, right? Yes. Um, but there's a, there's a whole second class that you can check out that we, we also filmed. What, um, Courtney, what surprised you the most about filming this class? Did anything come up for you? Hmm. I'm like my therapist. <laughs> trying to think. I think this, I haven't done altered books as like a, an art practice for myself in a while. I used to teach this class a lot in person. Um, and the thing that was different for me is that I don't often use an altered book practice as, um, like a sketchbook practice. I mostly do it for like a gift for somebody, almost like the book itself is a poem or like a love letter too. And so I have like a really finite and specific idea in mind when I start on the book. Um, so this is just like a different way of working where it's just experimentation, every spread. And that was nice to revisit. Um, and also, oops, also made me think like, oh, I should do an altered book gift um, to somebody soon. Just because I haven't done one in a while. So why not? What about you, Faith? The most magical gift I can imagine. Yes, they're really fun. I, I was going to run downstairs and go get some samples, but I ran out of time because my studio is also in this building. <laughs> but it's not connected to the office, so... I know. And also for anybody who hears that, like I know I worked on my kitchen table until basically four years ago, right before Luca was born. And then I was like, I need my own space. So you don't everyone have to, can see you behind, have I shared my studio with a three-year-old inadvisable. <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, what surprised me the most is that I kept going in my book. I oh yes, I love that. Um, because you know, it's you film it, it's this big press to get it done. And then there's always the like, ah, post. it's like post vacation, right? You're like sad you're not doing it. You're happy to be home in your own bed. And then it was just like, I got to stand vacation. That was a stretch of a metaphor. It, um, <laughs> but I did, I did enjoy revisiting the book and like trying my hand at the erasure poetry. Also, sometimes, I don't know. Well, no, cause you're um, organized. Sometimes if I lose my keys or my wallet or my phone or my family and I I feel like if I like sneak back into the room, maybe I'll catch it out in the open. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. often um, the creative process feels the same way to me mm -hmm. to where I'll like, what if I write a poem right now? And and <laughs> what if brain... I sneak up on the poem? Will it work? Yes. Right. And that's a really good point. Um, it's like a doodle, right? But it's, who says it's not art? Right. This is something that didn't make it into the class that I really enjoyed. Oh. I think because I was directly copying someone else. So that- Like Rothko, was, Josh. Um, I think they're like so snazzy though. Um, Linda would like to know from you. Oh, yes. So questions time. Please ask the questions in the comments. Courtney and I will take turns reading them off and I will definitely answer all of them because I can't help myself. Um, <laughs> So the first one Linda is about says, the China marker. Yes. So Linda's asking, tell us more about the China marker and does it stay sticky? Um, China marker is actually one of my most favorite tools. I'm a little bummed that they don't come in just like mostly black and white plus primary. Although I was talking to E and I did order some construction oil-based crayons that are neon pink, but they don't have the same noise that I like and enjoy about the China marker. Also, if you were the kind of kid who had retainers or braces, that's the same kind of thing that they use to mark the, like the wire on your teeth. So there's sometimes they're called a grease pencil. Um, and I just like it. It has a different kind of tactile quality than like a kid's crayon. It does have that like 
snap noise when you use it on the transparency that we did together on the pigeon day. Um, it's interesting that you're saying it's sticky though. It is sort of oil-based, but it's not creamy like an oil pastel. And so it shouldn't be um, like making your pages stick together or anything like that. It's it's not even tacky when you touch it. It's more like a, yeah, it's like a really waxy crayon. Um, if you are having issues with stickiness, you can take something like a super, super, super fine little amount of baby powder on a paintbrush and just paint over it. You shouldn't even be able to see the baby powder. It's just there to kind of like seal, if you will, the tackiness, if you're feeling that. Um, you can also like tape another transparency over it or add some kind of tissue on top or something. Um, I hope that answers your question, Linda. Let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, she's using her dad's old college calculus textbook. That's, I think that's so special. Well. And what is it about this process that makes us engage with one another? Because Courtney is saying that she makes altered books for other people. You're using this piece from someone else as a jumping off point. In my mind, a sketchbook is very personal, right? A sketchbook is just yours, but a book, especially a pre-owned book, it's not yours. You're borrowing it, right? And so it gives me a freedom and a flexibility that I don't feel otherwise. Um, but the sharing part of it, I didn't really consider it until tonight. Thank you for that, Kathy. That's lovely. Okay, how do you protect your ink pad from other colors when pro -shoiring? Good question. Um, in a perfect world, you'd probably have separate stencil brushes for each of your colors or for your color ranges, like yellows and oranges, pinks and reds, blues, greens kind of thing. Um, I used a baby wipe to gently sort of take the color off, but I'm not being super precise because we're just doing the live. Um, you could fully wash these out if you needed to. And then you could test on some another page of your altered book just to make sure that you're not um, picking up or transmitting ink from one pad to the other. But if you were doing a lot of pochoir, I would say dedicate a stencil brush to each color, each range of colors. They're not that expensive. And then you don't have to worry about wiping them between. Um, oh, it's not neon, but search for Mitsubishi Chinese marker in pink. I think I have that one. Also, there's one in, thank you, Phil, though. I love that. Um, also there is one that's made in Mexico that's pink that I found at a little shop and I like Google to see if they make other colors. The outside of it is hot pink, but the actual color of the crayon is just baby pink. I want a hot pink one. Um, I have one for you and it is Sakura and it's stinky, but it dries and it's permanent. It's is it oil -based? Stinky, fat. I believe so, which is okay. not good for books. No, 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 no. That's just like a different tactile quality. I keep hitting this, um, but I will check it out if it's Sakura for sure. I love Sakura stuff. And it's, but it's in their industrial line. So if you have like the catalog for art stuff, it's not going to be in there. And apparently it's like used by graffiti artists for tagging things yes. like trash cans. Um, so <laughs> it's really great though. Uh, Mike is not, I, I think that Mike should be a lot to use it. Chad says no because of the off gassing and developing brains. E says oil markers. I know. I think I think I got one for this altered book daily practice that was um, basically like the color wheel shoved into one marker or crayon, and it is oil based like that and smelly and then dries. But it has a it that's much creamier. I really love like the. I'm, I press really hard. That's like why I can't do the microns unless they're the PN. Um, yeah, Susan's saying Sakura solid paint markers. I think that's what Faith just mentioned. I will try Is that. that. What I'm talking about? But I want like a wax, like a true China marker. Okay, and Luva is asking, and you recommend stamp pads that work well and are economical enough for school. Yeah, I really like these Yellow Owl workshop stamp pads. They used to be five bucks. I think they're now $6 a piece. They work on all these surfaces, including like metal, glass, and plastic. And usually you have to use something like Stazon, which is closer to $12 per ink pad and has like actually smells good. It has like an almond smell, but it's because it's like permanent, but this actually will be permanent once it's dry. 
Um, and it comes in a nice like selection of colors, including gray, like a nice dove gray color. So I would recommend the Yellow Owl Workshop. They look different now. This is an old set, so they have old branding on them. Um, you can get them online or at your local art supply. Um, you could also do pochoir if you're working with like smaller kids who, I mean, I think the technique is easy. It's whether or not they have the level of interest to stay it out and get a nice dense field of color, but you could also work with like just kids stamp pads, like washable stamp pads or whatever is fine. Lindsay Barber has an excellent question for us. Do you have tips or tricks for someone who wants to work in a book with high gloss books, like cookbooks with color pages? My pens and markers aren't working so well. Just so, right? Yeah, gesso, black or white gesso to prime your pages for sure. You could also do something like a transparent, like a gel medium, if you still want the image to show through, but change the surface texture. Uh, once gel medium is dry, then you should be able to use your markers on it. Um, although it won't be absorbent, it'll still be sealed. It's just gonna be a different kind of a thing. I know what you're talking about, like those glossy 1970s, like cookbooks, they kind of like, create a skim or a surface on your marker and mess it up. Um, yes, technical, technically gesso does come in clear. I think that's gel medium though. I mean, I think it's just like a branding thing. Did we miss the comment by Pamela who says she uses old school suitcases where she stashes her pile of collage papers? That's so I romantic. I love that, how romantic. And the honestly, briefcase? those are not good for travel. They're so heavy. So fill them with <laughs> paper and put them in the corner. Briefcases. I love it. That's I want a briefcase. You know what I got that needs a briefcase. I'm back in, I'm back in my phase, Courtney. I got a I got a blazer. And a and a briefcase. I got a per I have a purple suit. It's polyester. I put it on. Chad went. Wow, what is that? Look, a purple suit. I didn't know they came with elastic waistbands. I was like. <laughs> Of course they do. It 100% polyester, purple like a grape. Amazing. So excited. And are you going to get like a maroon briefcase to go with that? Oh, Bell Mel says Prima Marketing Clear Gesso. Have you heard of Clear Gesso? Um, no, personally, no, but I, I trust Bell. Bell knows her things. Um, Several I'm people have said. I'm very curious about Prima Marketing, you guys, because First of all, it's like a terrible name for an art supply company because it sounds like it's for marketing. Um, I'm sure it's just because that's what they filed their LLC under. But I think they're watercolors and I like them. I do like them. I would say I we love them. We like use them a lot on our lives and in the office. And we have like, I think the whole set and they're really affordable. You can get them online. They sell them at Joanne. I don't know if they still do. Um <laughs> This is the one not your your um your suit. Liquitex makes the clear gesso. Okay, a lot of people are sounds like they're liking the clear gesso. We have to use the clear gesso now. Why would why don't you don't <laughs> imagine being on a Zoom meeting by the way with Courtney and then bringing up something <laughs> that just would like because um you're not into it. That's fine. We don't we don't have to. <laughs> Why is it? Uh, I think it's because I was a painting major in college. Gesso is made of ground marble dust. It is not transparent. I don't know. <laughs> I just am like, mm, it's not really gesso then. I don't know. <laughs> here, here is the image that I was really excited to use. I went to the Library of Congress website. I looked up their images and I typed in telescope. This man is looking through a telescope. So I'm going to turn my page this way. And I'm going to put him at the bottom and he's going to be looking at something up here. I don't know what it's going to be but we will find it. We have about 10 more minutes. Um, I would love to see also, people's pages. Like what images are you guys working with? And if you want to share with us um, an image or ask us a question with your mouths and not with your hands, please raise your hand. You can do that by going to the bottom of your screen, clicking on reactions. It's a little smiley face with a plus sign. And then you click raise hands and we will see it and we will call on you and you can show us what you're working on you can hold up to the screen you can ask us a question or share a comment um do you find erasure poetry as challenging but amazing as I do um have you had a favorite day so far you're really excited about um did you take 
the last daily practice with us. Um, and like, are you shocked to see this one is just as good, if not better? I also felt like with the first one, I did every single thing I wanted to do, and I didn't imagine that there'd be much more. And this one, I could have filmed it twice over. <laughs> so yeah. stoked. I think too, like the nice thing about, especially an altered book daily practice, but also any of our daily practices is just if, if you've already taken it, just do it again and change like your materials or change your um, reference imagery, you know, especially for this kind of a class, like you can just do the same daily practice over and over and change up what you're working with to get a different result every time. So it's like sort of endlessly um, instructional, informational fun. <laughs> I think. Bell says your last altered book daily practice was the class that drew me into the creative bug membership. Oh my gosh, Bell, you're a saint. Thank you for saying that. Bell just filmed with us. She has some classes coming out. I think the next one's in May. First one, the first one, the pop-up floral card card for Mother's Day. It's coming out in May. And Bella's scrap paper circus online on Etsy and I believe also on Instagram. Um She's an avid bookmaker. Thanks, Bill, for saying that. I thought that I was going to turn my page like this, but I don't think it needs to be turned like this. I think it can stick to this. Oh, yeah. Look, it's like in the little house. Maybe right. Your book. And then I can find some words on this side. Um, one thing that we did with the, if you have not seen the first class, um, we presented a lot more examples of, um, of altered books that have been published. There's the Karen Green book. Is it Frail Sisters? Um, you probably haven't seen it recently because I took it all. Um, not on purpose, very much on accident. And I'm happy to send it back. If it <laughs> needs to be sent back that one's awesome um there's also the humament oh i see a hand raised it's linda thanks for raising your hand linda oh i'm a teacher so i'm like come on you need to volunteer <laughs> that's so kind of you you know how it feels yeah and i'm like when when students don't volunteer i'll be like okay i'll wait <laughs> i guess we could have done that but we're, we're happy to chat with one another it was very good thank you so much What's up? How are you finding the daily practice? It is. It is fun. I'm so glad I came across the sign up sheet. And I actually went to library right before the workshop to print out things. Oh, yeah. Um, I made two so far. The first one was this one. Oh, cool. I love your three. Awesome. And the other one um, is this one. Oh, that's cool with the figure. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I only had like a watercolor brush. <laughs> so, so I used this brush to, to try to actually just fill the space. Um, but it worked. I think, and you know, you one thing that I learned with this um, regular paper is that it's just getting worn out quickly because it get wet. Um, so oh, yes, you, you're using cardboard. paint instead of ink. Is that why? Yes, yes, because yeah. it has water in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you said you might have said watercolor and ice based on that. Yeah. Um, yes, if you're just using inexpensive or thin kind of copy paper for uh right. for the copy paper, then yes, it will wear out. Not so much with the ink because the ink is not wet per se, but if you are using paint or watercolor, then that's gonna happen for sure. Thank yeah. you for sharing. We appreciate it. No, oh, thank you for hosting. It's super fun. Heather says she likes my tip about rubbing a wax candle over your pages to help deal with leaked glue. Forever a problem, right? The leak glue sticky page situation. Even I use crayons, acrylic paint sticks together pretty well. Um, it's very common to have sticky pages. And I have an alarm going off saying you're almost done with the live. I know and I'm sad about it. 
Um, I've been making collages and altered books for so many years that I was shocked to find something new. Um, but it absolutely works and it's very effective. This is this is my number one most stolen item in my studio is this hole puncher because I let Micah use it one day. Oh, Belmill says clear gesso as a final seal cures sticky pages. Listen, we're we're gonna be converts after this. All right, I hear y'all. Courtney is very difficult to convince of things. What's something that I convinced you of? I don't know, off the top of my head. That feels like asking my mom, like, why do you love me? And she's like, yeah. oh. why am I your favorite daughter? Uh, oh, is your hand raised. Oh, because Courtney is saved by the bell. You can tell me later in a, in a meeting. So I just clicked ask to unmute. Lovely, thank you very much. How's it going? How are Hello. You? I'm good, thank you. How are you both? So happy to see you. Hi. Excellent. Hello. Sorry, Courtney, I am with you. Uh, gesso is Italian for chalk or plaster, so you can't get clear. <laughs> um, I love you for that. I love you. <laughs> you're backing me up. I would be fine with the new clear gesso if they did not call themselves gesso. That's my problem because I'm like, mm, can't be clear. <laughs> but you hear what Belle's saying because gel medium, even when you use gel medium as a sealant, it can, because it is acrylic, it can stick, uh, especially if you leave it in the heat. So I'd be willing to take a look at it, but it should be called something else. <laughs> <laughs> this is also a sticking point of yours, like gouache. We're calling gouache. Opaque watercolor. Opaque watercolor. And you're like, you're wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're not wrong, but I'm just annoyed by it. Endlessly <laughs> annoyed by it. Um, I feel like this live has just turned into my artistic grievances. I won't bore you with all those. <laughs> they're my favorite thing. Fine, carry on. But I'll yeah. share you with what I've done. I want to see. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I love that. Like, it's like a sh I can't tell if it's moving a bit, but I really like the shadow. Is it a Buddha? What was it? It was this little cat. Oh, it's a cat. I can't yeah. tell. But that's really cool. I love it's that. It's perfect. It's very cool. I'm very cat person. I'll show you the image that I wanted to share because I can just imagine a face saying it. <laughs> but it felt a bit too fussy. So that Ooh, was the picture. That's the, perfection. The, the explanation was, it's not a flamingo. It's actually a fluffy goose. <laughs> <So it's> like... <laughs> perfect. You must have been so delighted. Like, yes. Absolutely. Definitely so. <laughs> well, thank you for uh thank you for contributing for your lovely spread. How, how have you been finding the daily practice? Are you having a good time with it? Yeah, definitely so. Um, I'm saying I'm trying to sort of yeah, sort of follow on with it on the daily practice, but I'm also sort of doing the original one as well. So kind of doing them sort of back to back. Um, I can like save some spreads so I can see how your um, book structures also will fit in there as well so mm. kind of doing some of that to just make it into like a big sort of almost like reference book type thing as well which is nice to to pull on <laughs> I love it I love to hear it thank you so much no yeah worries. make up your own daily practice just combine all the things <laughs> definitely so <laughs> bye bye thank you Phil it's nice to see you so in our final minute we'd like to thank you so much for joining us um, now and always, Shay says, how about clear ground instead of gesso? You're fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I feel like the next time you complain about an art supply, I will be texting Shay saying she's at it again. She also hates this thing. I'm so sorry. It's, it's the little sister in me, even though I'm not a little sister. I never got to be a little sister. I'm like, mom, she's doing it again. Um. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us so much. We're so happy to be spending this time with you. And it's such an honor to be able to come to you. And um, even when it's not a live thing and when it's just the daily practice, that is also an honor. It's so exciting getting to share with you the things that make us the most excited. We're both very passionate, clearly, about altered books. And I Our love life. hearing people that are like along their journey, like Phil having a reference book and working on multiple books at the same time. I've heard from a bunch of people that they are using 
books that they used in the first class. I'm like so enamored with my own project that I can't stop doing it, which is like, there's something magical happening. And I'm I'm just excited yeah. to share it with all of you. With it. Keep, remember to post your photos in the gallery on the class page as well. I've been looking at those and I've just been so impressed with what I've seen so far. I will recheck out the hashtag on Instagram too, because I haven't checked in a few days. So, and you will be getting a copy of this recording um, after the fact, if you have registered for it, um, whether you are here or not. So keep an eye out in your inbox in box for that and um, expect to hear from us in the galleries on Instagram and um, in future lives. What's our next one in two weeks? Well, we're doing an in-studio live next week. Me and Twinkie are doing fairy houses, <laughs> like garden fairy houses. That's next Wednesday. And then what month are we? April. And then May, I think we're taking a little bit of a break. It is our birthday month. So we'll have a lot of other fun things happening in May. Um, Faith will be back here filming some new classes. It won't be released until later. Cabrina, who's on our team, is going to be filming some stuff. Steph is, uh, aka Twinkie Chan, is prepping some classes. So we've got lots of fun things in the works. To stay tuned. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. It was lovely to see your faces and your artwork.